In this part, we're going to look at another simple recurrent neural network. We're going to look at the Jordan neural network. In the last section, we saw the Elman neural network. The Jordan neural network is very much based on the Elman neural network. First, let's look at the type of data that we will actually present to this type of neural network. We're going to use the exclusive OR, and we're going to present nearly or exactly the same type of data that we saw before. So for the exclusive OR, we're going to have the typical truth table for exclusive OR of 0 and 0, 0 and 1, 1 and 0, and 1 and 1. This is the input, and then the output for exclusive OR in both of these cases is, is going to be, exclusive OR is always 0 when they're the same, and 1 when they're different. Now we want to, we don't want to have two input neurons into the Jordan neural network. We want to have just one, like we had in the Elman neural network. Because we want to arrange this data in a temporal sort of way, through time. So through time you're going to see a 0, then a 0, then a 0, a 0, a 1, a 1. We're going to look at, we're going to present the first number, and then it should return what the next number is going to be. So the next number, 0, the next number would be another 0. Then after we've seen two zeros, we would hope it would return the answer, which would be 0. So we're going to arrange the data as one long stream of numbers. And again, just like we did before. So the first row would be 0, 0, 0. You give it a 0, you want another 0 back. You give it that 0, you want that 0 back. Then you'd put in the next row, which is going to be 0, 1, 1. That's that row. Then you put in the next row, 1, 0, 1. And then you put in the final row, which is going to be 1, 1, 0. So that is exclusive OR arranged as a temporal sequence of numbers. That's what Elman in the last article originally used to test his neural network. Okay, we do need to arrange this in the input and output of the neural network. So we're going to have one input neuron and one output neuron, just one of each. So we're going to feed in the 0, and we're going to expect a 0 back. Then we're going to feed in that 0, also going to expect a 0 back. We're going to feed in that 0, expect a 0 back. Feed in that 0, and now we get a 1 back. And that's a problem, because feed forward neural networks, like we saw in the first parts of this series, you give it a number, and you can arrange these in any order. So here we're wanting a 0 back from a 0. Now we want a 1 back from a 0. That would be a disconnect for a feed-forward neural network. But these simple recurrent neural networks like Elman and Jordan, the order matters. So the fact that we gave it a 0 and then this 0 and this 0, it would remember that we're 3 in, and now it's going to change. So an Elman nor or Jordan neural network, like we're going to see now, is similar to the Elman, but he makes a change as far as how the, the context layer, and the context layer is what has the short-term memory, how it is structured. We're going to have an input layer, and let me just draw this. So we're going to have an input layer. it's going to have one neuron. Then we're going to have a hidden layer. It's 
going to have two neurons. Going to have an output layer. It's going to have one neuron. This is because we have one input neuron, so one, one output neuron, one, and two hidden neurons. They're really just there to help process. Could be four. It would work just as well. But you want to have usually as few as you can get by with. And it's feeding like this, just like a typical feed-forward neural network. The difference is we have a context layer. it is going to have one neuron. Now it's very important that the number of neurons in the context layer for a Jordan network matches the number of neurons in your output layer. Just like in the Elman, it had the context layer count had to match the number of hidden neurons. So the output from the neural network is going to be used, but the output is also going to be used to feed the context layer. Now this is a non-weighted connection, which means the value from the output is simply used to fill the context layer's input. That is, the whatever value you last output is now going to become the value for the context layer. And the context layer, just like in the Elman neural network, is going to feed to the hidden network. We'll see how that's all connected in a second. But this is a weighted connection, so it's going to have an activation function and weights and everything just like a normal layer would have in a neural network. So now let's take a look at what the actual neurons look like. That's the layers. The neurons that those layers represent, we're going to have a input, input 1, that is going to be fed by the outside world by whatever our input is. We are also going to have a bias neuron just as before. So bias 1. This bias neuron is always going to have a value of 1 fed because that's what a bias neuron does. Then we're also going to have a context neuron. The context neuron is going to be C1. And it is shown here. Context 1 is going to always receive the value from the previous iteration, I minus 1, of the output neuron, output 1, which we haven't drawn yet. So output 1 is going to feed into the context, the first context neuron. Then we're also going to have a, the two hidden neurons. Hidden 1 and hidden 2. These are going to feed down to output 1. Now we're also going to have another bias neuron, just like we always have a bias neuron feeding into the next layer, just like we did with feed forward neural networks. So bias 2 is going to be right here. And then we need to connect these all up. Input 1 is going to feed 
to hidden one and hidden two. Nothing feeds a bias neuron because a bias neuron always has a value of one. However, the bias does feed hidden one and hidden two, as does the context layer or the context neuron. So you can see we have six weights on this first synapse connecting the input layer and its bias and the context layer that that's right there to the to the next layer. And then to the output you're just going to have the hidden layers flowing like this. And that gives you three more weights. And that is the basic structure of that neural network. Now to calculate the value, we calculate just like we would any feedforward neural network. Because we basically flatten this to a feedforward neural network. So if we just wanted to calculate hidden one, now this is exactly like how we did things in the third part of this series where I showed you the fundamental calculation for neural networks. We are going to, we would want to calculate hidden one, then hidden two, and then finally using those two values that we'd calculate, calculate output one. So what you're going to do is you need to calculate H1, the value for H1 is going to equal, now you have to pass this entire thing into the activation function. We talked about activation functions back in part three, but this is sigmoid or ta hyperbolic tangent or one of the activation functions. So you're going to basically take the value of I1 times, well, hidden, hidden 1 has three weights coming into it. So we're just going to assume that these weights are W1 W2 and W, that's W2, the, the inbound arrows, and W3 so I1 times weight 1 plus bias 1 times weight 2 plus the context one, and that's just the output from the previous, from the previous iteration, times W3. That whole thing then fed into the activation function, whatever it would happen to be. For an exclusive OR, you're probably using the sigmoid activation function because it does not require negative numbers. So that's hidden one. Then you'd calculate hidden two similarly. You don't have to calculate the bias neurons or the context neurons. They come, the context neurons come from the previous iteration and the biases are always one. Then finally you would calculate output one using the same formula except you would plug in the values of hidden one and um, hidden two for the, for the formula. And that shows you basically how you would calculate a Jordan neural network.